हेलो एवरी वन वेलकम बैक टू माई चैनल केमिकल अड्डा इन टूडेज वीडियो वी आर गोइंग टू अंडरस्टैंड इंपॉर्टेंट क्वेश्चन ऑन लीचिंग इन दिस वीडियो वी विल अंडरस्टैंड वट इज द लीचिंग वट इज द डिफरेंस बिटवीन लिक्विड एक्सट्रैक्शन एंड लीचिंग वट आर द इंडस्ट्रियल एप्लीकेशन ऑफ लीचिंग एंड वाई इज द प्री ट्रीटमेंट नेसेसरी बिफोर लीचिंग सो लेट्स स्टार्ट विद द फर्स्ट क्वेश्चन वट इज लीचिंग so leaching is the process of extracting one or more substances from a solid mixture by contact with the solvent hence leaching is an operation in which a particular component of the solid is leached out with the help of a solvent but how does it work so the solvent selectively dissolves a particular component from the solid allowing the desired solute to be carried away that means the solvent that is used for leaching partially dissolves the solid substance from its mixture with an insoluble solid and helps the necessary solute to be extracted then leaching is also known as solid extraction because in this process a liquid solvent is used to remove a specific component from a solid mixture then it is one of the oldest unit operations in chemical industries and has different names depending on how it is performed like percolation so originally leaching referred to percolation where the liquid flows through a fixed bed of solid but is now used for all methods then another name for leaching is lixiviation so it is another term for leaching though it was first used for extracting alkali from wood ashes next name is extraction it is a general term for separation processes including leaching next is decoction It is a special type of leaching where the solvent is used at its boiling temperature. Then the other name is elution or elutriation. So, elution occurs when the soluble material is mainly on the surface of a solid and is simply washed off. Now, let's move on next question. What is the difference between liquid extraction and leaching? So, as we all know, liquid extraction and leaching are both separation processes. So in both the process that is in liquid extraction and leaching one constituent from a solid or liquid is removed by means of a liquid solvent but these two methods differ in their mechanisms and applications so the first point of difference is liquid extraction is used to separate two miscible liquids using a solvent which preferentially dissolves one of them whereas leaching is the process of extracting one or more substances from a solid mixture by contact with a solvent then the second point the driving force for liquid liquid extraction is the solubility difference between liquids because in liquid liquid extraction the solute dissolves in the extracting solvent based on differences in solubility and in leaching the driving force is the solubility of a solute in a solvent because in leaching the solvent penetrates the solid dissolves the desired solute and is then removed in the liquid phase then the next point is in liquid liquid extraction two immiscible liquid phases involved but in leaching a solid and liquid phase involved then the applications of liquid liquid extraction separation of metal ion from aqueous solutions using organic solvents in hydrometallurgy extraction of pharmaceuticals from fermentation broths purification of essential oils whereas the applications of leaching are extraction of metals from ores for example gold cyanidation coffee or tea brewing removal of sugar from sugar beets using water now the next question is what are the industrial applications of leaching so the first industrial applications of leaching is metallurgical industry for extracting metals from ores so leaching is widely used in metallurgy to extract valuable minerals from ores like cobalt nickel and zinc are removed from their ores using leaching techniques then copper is extracted from certain ores using sulfuric acid or ammoniacal solutions and gold is separated from its ores using sodium cyanide solutions which is also called cyanide leaching Second application is extraction of natural organic products. So, leaching helps to separate naturally occurring substances from their original structures. Like sugar is extracted from sugar beets using hot water. 
Oil is separated from soybean and cotton seeds by leaching with water. Next application is pharmaceutical applications. So, leaching plays a vital role in extracting medicinal compounds from plants. Because many pharmaceutical products are recovered from plant roots and leaves through leaching. Now next question is. Why is pretreatment necessary before leaching? Or, explain the preparation of solids in leaching. So, the efficient operation of a leaching process and the method to be used can depend on any previous treatment that may be given to the solid. That means, the effectiveness of leaching often depends on how the solid is prepared before the process. Because, the right technique for pretreatment of solid can drastically reduce leaching time and improve efficiency. But, different materials require different pretreatment methods to make the soluble substance accessible to the solvent. Like, soluble material trapped in an insoluble matrix. So as we know, in some solids, small particles of the soluble substance are surrounded by insoluble material. Hence the solvent must first diffuse in, dissolve the material and then diffuse out. That's why it required special preparation. This situation is common in metallurgical laws. Then next, crushing and grinding speed up leaching. Because, breaking down the solid increases surface area, which makes it easier for the solvent to reach the target substance. For example, if a copper ore is ground to pass through a 60 mesh screen, leaching takes only 4 to 8 hours. But if we use 60 mm granules, it takes 5 days. And if the particles are as large as 150 mm, leaching could take up to 6 years. That is why, grinding is often necessary. But since grinding is expensive, the decision on how much to grind depends on the quality of the ore. But when fine grinding is necessary, like in the case of gold ores. So, gold ores have tiny metallic particles trapped in quartzite. And this quartzite is highly resistant to solvents, so grinding to a fine 100 mesh powder is essential for leaching. But when grinding is not necessary, in this case, leaching is done without fine grinding. Because not all materials need fine grinding. Like, if the soluble substance is evenly distributed and the structure allows the solvent to flow, leaching can happen without extra processing. Then in the case of leaching from plant and animal-based materials. So as we know, leaching is not just for metals, it's widely used in food and pharmaceuticals. So, vegetable and animal bodies are cellular in structure, and the natural products to be leached from these materials are usually found inside the cells. Hence, if the cell walls remain unbroken when exposed to a solvent, the solute slowly passes through the walls through osmosis. This process is slow, but it is impractical and sometimes undesirable to grind the material small enough to release the content of individual cells. Like, in sugar beets, the sugar is inside the plant cells. Hence, instead of grinding, they are cut into thin slices called corsets, so water can reach the cells without breaking them completely. Then in pharmaceutical plants, drying is often used to rupture cell walls, making extraction easier. And soybeans and other seeds are rolled or flaked to break and open the cells and speed up oil extraction. Then, when no grinding or crushing is needed. So, if the solute is only on the surface of the solid or dissolved in surface liquid, simple washing is enough. In this case, no grinding or crushing is necessary and the particles can be washed directly. Hence, the efficiency of leaching depends on how you prepare your material. And crushing, grinding, drying, slicing or even just washing. All these methods play an important role in making leaching efficient. Now next question is. What are the common types of leaching equipment? Or, oh, name of equipment for leaching. So, as we know, leaching is the process of extracting a soluble substance from a solid by using a liquid solvent. And hence, the choice of equipment depends on the material. So, leaching operation carried out in two ways. First is, unsteady state leaching, which is also called batch process. This process happens in separate steps. 
Then another way is steady state leaching, which is also called continuous process. This extraction happens non-stop. That means steady state operation leaching happens continuously. Now let's see some common types of unsteady state operation of leaching. The first one is in place leaching, which is also called in situ leaching. In this unsteady state operation, the solvent is injected underground to dissolve valuable minerals. That means the solvent is injected directly into underground ore deposits to dissolve the desired material. Then, the next type of unsteady state operation is heap leaching. In this operation, the solvent is sprayed over a heap of crushed ore. So, the crushed ore is piled into heaps, and the solvent is sprayed over it to dissolve the target substance. Then the next is, percolation tanks. In this operation, solvent flows through a tank filled with solid material. So that, the solvent passes through a tank filled with solid material, allowing extraction. Then the next is, filter press leaching. This operation is carried out by using pressure to force the solvent through the solid material for faster extraction. Then next is the agitated vessel. So the agitated vessel is the tank with stirrers that mix the solid and solvent which improves leaching efficiency. Then the last type is the shank system. So this method is commonly used in sugar production to extract sucrose from crushed cane. Now let's look at steady state leaching where extraction happens continuously. So the first steady state operation is leaching during grinding. In this type, the solvent is added directly while grinding the solid, improving extraction. Next type is the leaching in door type of agitators. So, in this operation rotating paddles are used to mix solids and solvent which speeds up leaching. Next type is leaching in door balance tray thickener. So, in this system, multiple layers of trays are used where solvent flows through it, which helps in extracting the salute gradually. Next is, continuous counter current decantation. In this type, multiple tanks are arranged, so that, fresh solvent moves opposite to the solid flow, for better extraction. Then next type is, leaching of vegetable seeds. So, for the extraction of oils from vegetable seeds, special equipment is used. First is Rotasal. It is a rotating drum that extracts oil continuously. Then next is the Kennedy extractor. It is a moving belt type extractor which uses a moving belt to extract soil. Then Bowl Man extractor. It is a bucket type extractor which is used for large scale oil extraction. Then the last is a continuous horizontal extractor. It is a conveyor type system for continuous leaching of seeds like soybeans. That's all for today's video. I hope you found the questions regarding leaching to be informative and helpful. In the upcoming part of the video, we will explore another question related to leaching. So, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more chemical engineering content. And also, feel free to comment below for more content suggestions. Stay tuned for more amazing topics and I'll see you in the next video.